You know, if you're anything like me, you've probably spent an embarrassing amount of time looking at bus conversion videos out there on the YouTubes. Heck, that might even be why you found this video. But today, the great Chuck Cassie himself, otherwise known as me, is going to be diving into an influencer's attempt at building a school bus and posting that time-lapse build video on YouTube. And you're going to get my unfiltered initial reaction to it in real time. I swear I have not watched the video. It was suggested to me by one of the Patreon members on my channel, and I'm excited to see how it goes. This guy is definitely a builder. He's got skills. He's just never done this before. And I'm curious to see what happens if you are like this fella, President Che, and you've got the skills, but you lack the knowledge to do a bus conversion yourself and then share it to YouTube. It's gonna be interesting. Don't go anywhere. My name's Chuck Cassidy. Let's see what it's like when an influencer tries to build a school bus. Before we get started on this video, I want to just give a quick shout out to all of the supporters over there on the Patreon. That's where this video suggestion came from. And if you're thinking about becoming a member, well, just do it. You know, you get some perks and you get to be a part of the Discord, which is a lot of fun. And it gives you the opportunity to suggest things like this video for me to take a look at. And if it, you know, tickles my fancy, we'll cover it here live on the channel. I think it's fun for everyone. So without further ado, let's tune in, let's take a look at the screen and see what President Che and his bus conversion are all about. All right, so this is President Che. Seems like a cool dude, honestly. Probably be friends with him. Uh, this is his little page here. Uh, don't mind all of my tabs open. So the guy clearly, you know, he's, he's taken the admirable path of building amazing, weird stuff on YouTube. He's definitely got talent and, uh, and sharing it for views. And all of his videos seem to do really well. It's crazy. Even his first video, 46,000 views on his first one. And then everything he does seems to be really good. But the video we're really curious about today is going to be this one. His, I think, most viewed video, 8.3 million views. I don't know what that works out to in the YouTube algorithm, but we're talking about lots of thousands of dollars. And this is a guy who doesn't know what he's doing, but he knows how to do a lot of stuff. So that's why I chose this. I think it's gonna be an interesting thing to see. Um, let's see what somebody who thinks they know what they're doing, <laughs> which is maybe most of you out there. Let's see what happens when they get out there and do it themselves. So we're gonna go ahead and tune into his video. I'm gonna full screen this, you know, cause that's what we want. He turned a bus into a luxury tiny home. Let's see how he did. President Che, Take us away, my friend. And I have not watched, I swear, I have not watched this. It was just sent to me by a Patreon member. He said, take a look at this, pray for them. <laughs> so here we go. The next 20 minutes will be a heck of a ride. And uh, there is music in the video, but I'm gonna go ahead and mute it because, uh, in this video, I'm going see, to turn a no one wants to hear that. Bus into a so it's a 1991 bus, they're turning into a tiny home. I already know it's a carpenter school bus. You gotta be careful, buses from Carpenter in that age, they actually had a recall because of the roof uh, welding system, yeah. Anyway, this guy has, he has more hair than I do, he's better looking, so he's got that going for him. This looks like a veggie tank or something gone wrong. That's cool, I've been there, I've totally bought the wrong bus before. Got an air conditioning system, he's got a buddy, and uh, in typical YouTube fashion, they're just getting after it, so. Yeah, bang, bang on the door, baby, bang, bang. Any B-52s fans in here? Oh, they didn't, see all those pit marks on the side there? Someone was angle grinding and didn't protect the windows. Oh, I think those are termites. That's cool, we don't really have those in Colorado. So they're doing a good job. I mean, they're getting it gutted. They kind of, you know, they bought a bus that had extra to gut, lucky them. Um, so those interior air conditioning units, they can be a real pain in the butt. You're supposed to take them in and have them professionally emptied. I don't understand. Okay. So they're power washing, <laughs> but they left all the insulation in. That's so gross. They just soaked it with water. They framed out their floor. They're filling. Oh my God. Okay. I got to pause it. So they framed out their floor. You all know, I hate that. They framed it on 16 inch centers, which is also insane. And then they packed it full of tons of moisture absorbing, <laughs> fiberglass insulation. They didn't paint it. They didn't seal it. That stuff is going to be wet after the first rainstorm and the mold will begin soon after. And as you can tell, they didn't remove the stock windows and they didn't drop the stock ceiling. They just kind of left it. It's like, why even bother, you know, and they're just going for it. Okay. We're going to unpause this. Let's keep going. Look at that. Day one, uh, they already got their subfloor in. 
I don't know what this is. It's fun with the sound muted. So dude's got his aviators on, he's stoked, he's pounding the roof, been there before. Just skip straight to painting, yeah. Just paint on the insulation, paint over everything. This is cool. This is how we do it on YouTube, influencer style. Um, I think he's upset about some runs in the paint. I'm more upset about the mold he's gonna be living in, in his walls and floor. Oh, they're gonna sand it and try to fix it. That's cool, that's cool. Well, their heart is in a good place. I don't know if it's in the right place, but they're definitely focused on it, uh, the aesthetics. Um, yeah, okay, this is good. So they, I think they found a leak. This is fun because I don't get to hear what he's saying, but the leak looks bad. It's dripping all over their floor. Keep in mind, on the other side of that floor is fiberglass. <laughs> They're literally filling their sponge-like fiberglass floor with moisture. So it sounds like they're making the decision maybe to remove the ceiling. Yes, okay. There is hope. Um, now what is going on here? Okay, so they pulled it down, but did they like, re uh, I don't think they fixed anything, you know? Whatever, we're on to framing, you know, as is the YouTube way, carry on. So they're framing right over the windows. They're giving no regard to the windows. They're using two by fours. They're costing themselves just tons of interior space. Now, I admire the gumption, I admire the speed, but the, the lack, I'm gonna pause it here because the lack of foresight, if one of those windows ever breaks and it's behind a wall, the only way to replace a school bus window, a stock one is from the inside. Well, if you build a wall over it, you're not going to be able to replace it. So he's digging himself into a luxury tiny home hole that he's never going to be able to crawl out of, which is too bad because it's going to be filled with mold and mildew and stuff because they use fiberglass. If you have any questions about what kind of insulation to use, I've got videos about that. Um, his layout looks cool. He's just giving up so much space to the thickness of the interior walls there with the two by four framing and whatnot. Absolutely insane. Um, Installing lights and wiring. So they're cutting holes in the ceiling. They're slinging wires too. Nice, they got the wire tape. This guy has a great hairdo though. I mean, if I was his age with that hair, I would, this is what I would be doing. Unfortunately, I didn't figure this all out until too late in life. Okay, so they're doing the household, the residential door in there. Yeah, just use wood. Wood's fine. No, it's not. That wood's gonna rot so fast, but that's cool. Uh, they're doing it fast. They're doing it for views and that's important. I think they're showing an example here of what they're trying to do. I don't know, pipes? Pipes, there's no pipes. It's all lines. Mm -hmm. The flow of arrow, nice. Black and gray, very good. So this guy's getting after it. I respect that. The bus size is cool. He's just using wood everywhere. And wood is like, wood's great, I love wood, but it's not like what I would like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Excuse my French. He's using screws and plywood to mount the water tanks. He clearly has his formula, he knows what works, he knows what he's comfortable with, and he gets after it, and I respect that. But sometimes you need to learn new skills. Okay, so they're talking about the side paneling. He's clearly giving us a heart-to-heart. -heart. Oh, he's kicking aside the fiberglass. Oh, nope, nope, he's definitely filling the walls with fiberglass. So that R13 is like ambitious. I don't think you're gonna get R13 out of a cavity like that because things like fiberglass, like they need the airspace to have that R value, and if you compress them, they lose our value. He's building his gray tank mounts out of plywood and two by fours. The dude's got Ryobi, no diss on Ryobi, but for a guy who clearly, wait a second, I swear to God, I just saw drywall. We'll see if that was true. I'm not allowed to rewind. But for a guy who makes his living off of building shit on YouTube, you think he'd buy a little better tools? Whatever. Building out the bathroom, here we go. So it looks like we're using a cement board He's probably cut those pieces of wood in the bottom, you know, that you see, those slats, to give him the slope he needs. And it looks like he's just going in hard with this uh, cement board. And I, the, the vent fan <laughs> cut into the wall here. That's like a conventional household vent fan, just like sideways. Heck yeah, rock on, brother. Uh, screwing in the cement board to the walls. That's okay, you know. The thing about cement board is that it's not waterproof. Water won't degrade it, but it is definitely permeable. And that's why I like to use weedy board or things like that made of foam because they are actually waterproof in themselves. He's telling the camera all the good things that he just did. Now he's waterproofing. What do we got? So it's an extra step, but that's okay. He's painting it with 
Some people would use red guard. This is probably like blue guard. I don't even know if that's a thing, but it makes it waterproof, so that's cool. Hanging out with his bestie in the newly waterproof zone. Close up on the face, nice. Here we go, tile time. I love a tile shower. I think it's really cool. He bought some fake marble looking tire that I tile that I think is like utterly disgusting and ugly and atrocious, but teach his own and he's doing this faux brick stuff that I think is just like so tacky and ugly, but that's fine. Personal preference, some people uh, are cool with living in ugly things and I'm not, so there's that. What's the waterproofing? Oh, a second layer of some black substance on the bottom, that's cool. And oh, it must have been like a rubberized thing and he's doing this deck system. Now the question here is like he's, okay, okay, so the toilet goes on there. Wouldn't have done an RV toilet, you know. Definitely would have gone composting. I'm biased though, because I love my composting. I hate a black tank. Cool, and he's doing the generator thing, nice. I also, as you know, think a generator's kind of stupid if you're only back. Nice, look at how bad, I'm gonna pause it here. Look at the plywood around that, cut very poorly. Like this is a guy making a living off of YouTube showing people how he builds shit. Granted, he's clearly getting it done, but the dude, Give zero fucks. <laughs> we're just, we're mounting generators with plywood and two, it's like, he's Mr. Plywood and two by four. Nice, are we gonna put metal on the generator box? Yeah, we are, you know we are. Cool, cutting metal with the skill saw, done that. Hopefully you put a ferris blade. Oh, is that a metal break? Yeah, from Harbor Freight. Um, I don't get the idea behind building it with wood and framing it in metal. So we're skipping steps. Hold on, I'm pausing it because I swear to God, that looks like drywall. It's, I'm seeing drywall in a bus. Holy smokes. Amazing. God bless the people on the internet. It's fun because like my audio is muted, but he's uh, putting carpet padding and carpet in the loft. That's cool, that's how you would build an RV in the 70s. Did this guy use drywall everywhere? Oh my God, okay. Look around, look around the sides and the ceiling and stuff. This fella's using dry, and the ceiling looks like by the way. Crazy how bad that looks. And he's putting up this cute like net system. He's stoked on it. Put carpet everywhere, why not? Carpet and uh, fiberglass. Yeah, they, they will do a great job of absorbing all of the water that you spill. Oh, and that particle board that he's using around there. This is cool. He's building something that's like ready to absorb the water. I think his water management plan is to absorb all the water that comes out. Um, God, is that really drywall? I should have unmuted him, but we're just gonna have to see what happens. So the master bedroom, he's a big fan of OSB, not my top pick. Uh, that's fine though. No? and we're using drywall screws everywhere, that's cool. And this fake brick, like, God, it's so, f it's ugly. I see people I know, other influencers, they love this like fake brick look, and I'm like, dude, just, it's a bus, you know? Let's be honest. Um, it's not ever gonna be brick, why do, I hate that. Why are we uncomfortable with letting things be what they actually are, you know? For crying out loud, if you wanna be a wall, be a wall. If you wanna be a brick, be a brick. If you're a bus, don't have brick walls. Um, he's giving us a, work, a talk through, yeah. So he, he built a face frame for the cabinets, threw in some bulkheads. Not really how I would do it, but that is a lightweight way of doing it. Not that light is good. Looks like this uh, fake uh, countertop went in. Instead of doing the sink as an inset, yeah, just cut the whole rough and <laughs> drop it right in. This guy's fit though, he must work out. Look at those arms, that's cool. That's a nice fitting t-shirt as well. Yeah, there's his barb. <laughs> there was the weights as if on cue. Um, cool, so this guy, oh God, he's just filling, that's like, if I was a rat, that's where I would live. Also if I was mold or mushrooms. So we're building it out. It's sad, it's cool. People might watch this though and think that this is a guide or some way to do it and like it's a way to build things in the shape of a bus, but this is not gonna be something you'd wanna live in. The fact they're using drywall is like freaking me out. Nice, that's a good use for that god awful, ugly, cheap composite countertop though, which is cool. Um, anything we can do to keep those out of landfills is great. 
This guy clearly works out. What a hot guy. Um, it's good. If you're good looking, YouTube is kind of kind to you. So my question is like, he just cut that edge of the countertop. Like what's he going to do for the cut edge? Oh my God, dude, look at this chair. Okay. So like there's no reclining. Hopefully that's far enough back. But do you see that cut edge on the laminate there with the, the countertop there right in front of the se the steering wheel? How are you gonna trim that out, partner? That seat, is it far enough back? One wonders, because it certainly can't go back any farther. <laughs> oh, oh sh here we go, okay. Um, maybe they're making a mod, yeah. Okay, so the seat wasn't far enough back. Yeah, what, a, what an idiot, that's fine. Still waiting to see when they go in with the mud and finish out this drywall. That looks insane. So they're building custom doors. That's like pretty cool. Um, I, I think I like that. Yep. Yep. So they're trying to recreate that. It's funny to me that they would try to save any money on this though, because the dude's going to make, you know, thousands of dollars off of this video, but uh, they're not trying to show you the right way to do it or the smart way to spend your money. They're showing you how they did it to make a YouTube video that would get lots of clicks, you know, to distill it down. Again, no diss on this guy, but uh, I'm gonna diss on this guy, so. <laughs> um, he's breaking the door, nice, okay. Yeah, so I'm confused all of a sudden, um, but it looks like they've figured it out. They've made these ugly household style panel shaker doors that I really think are ugly and not special. And this faux brick is just bumming me out. They don't show what kind of uh, grout they used in there. No, don't put it there. No. Are we putting the mini split on the side? No. God, isn't it ugly with all that insulation plowed up against the windows there? Uh, well, are we going underneath? Okay, thank God. Oh good, more two by fours. Yeah, some lag bolts and stuff. Let's just take a moment and look at the plumbing <laughs> happening. Uh, is everything going downhill? Uh, if you look at the top here, um, in the center, it looks like something comes out and then it actually does turn up slightly. <laughs> it's like contagious. In my other videos, you saw how another influencer was convinced you could have water flow upwards. So it comes out, looks like it flows up to clear the frame rail and then hopefully drops down into a gray water tank. But if you're looking at this whole picture, look at the amount of wood untreated unpainted. There's nothing protecting it. This wood is going to rot faster than a pumpkin after Halloween. That's a good one, right? Uh, hanging out underneath a bus like this. Ugh. I'm sorry, mini split. You deserve better. Okay. And they're hanging it off of the bolts as you saw. So there's no bearing, right? Bearing is call is what we call when a load is sitting on something, which is a nice way to do it. The way they mounted it's totally reliant on these lag bolts screwed up into the grain and you can see in this pause screen at least on the front side those lag bolts are driven in such a way that they want to split the grain that sucks okay so he's talk he's giving us a thing this is where he wants to mount something all the drywall something the dude used drywall on a school bus which is unforgivable and it looks like his method for cutting drywall is like tearing it out bravo it's in yep they're doing the lines. Oh, the, that all of that fiberglass in the subfloor just gives me so much anxiety. Can you imagine how much water that could absorb? Immediately we're on the exterior. I look at that Franken. What's going on up there? Okay, so the dude is sanding. Oh, what the hell? Okay, this guy definitely works out. He's giving himself a wedgie with his massive ass muscles. But they're hanging sheet metal right over the. F windows like get the windows out of there this is so weird this is truly weird um it looks like they're getting ready to paint it so i guess the inside's done <laughs> that was fast oh god so we're painting it i didn't see any type of etching primer go on to deal with the galvanized steel if you're ever painting galvanized or really any type of steel you should uh, use an etching primer oh here's the grout so I'm curious what they're using because typically brick would just use mortar for grout. Um, oh, we're using caulk for grout. Okay. Holy crap. This is bad. Okay. They're primed. Uh, I don't have high hopes of that paint sticking though, because they didn't etch the metal first. 
The final coat. Wow, slow-mo. Are they painting this bus black? Big mistake, right? I mean, if you're going to be parked anywhere in the sun, oh, take those windshield wipers off. It's hard to watch, right? I still, like, what do you think is the worst part of the build so far? To me, it's either the, it's a tie between the drywall and the fiberglass insulation and the floor and walls. Um, the best part of the video is honestly that, you know, this guy's good looking. And I'm, you know, I'm not even of that persuasion, but it's pretty clear that in the absence of any like technical ability, uh, at least having someone good to look at is always nice. See that unfinished edge above the steering wheel? Still unfinished and bad. Most of it's like bad. A lot of this type of influencer build videos, and there's a lot of channels out there, I've even worked with people who are these people, they don't have the skills and they rely on the fact that in video, everything hides details. And you know, if you can hide things, it doesn't matter. Oh, so this is how he fixed the body. He used uh, great stuff. Nice aerial shot of RVs. Who cares? We all know what RVs look like. Um, anyways, the thing about influencer builds is that oftentimes they rely on the fact that you can't see details to make up for their lack of build experience because they're just so hell-bent on making content. And everyone wants to see the start and finish, right? Start to finish, how it happens. I'm here to point out all the things they fuck up along the way. So this guy's clearly blowing it hard. I don't know what he thinks is going to happen here. I wish I could hear the dialogue, but a part of me is fine that I can't. Um, I also want to point out in all of these shots, like just pay attention to the cut edges, look for trim would go, take a look at the gaps on the ceilings, all of that stuff, because that's what makes a build nice. And that's the first thing you don't see when you look at a YouTube video, because you don't have the resolution and presence to take it all in in person. Oh, body work with a 10 pound sledge is definitely how you do it. And yeah, let's use a pressure washer and make sure, okay, fixing dent, just new metal over the foam. Absolutely the worst idea you could have. Um, it's not gonna be watertight, tight see, you can already see the moisture is gonna get in there. Um, that's why, like, you know, it's not a good deal to buy a banged up bus in the hopes that you'll save money because it takes a lot of time and energy to fix body work and do metal work. Well, it looks like they came to their senses though. Um, maybe they're gonna paint the outside blue and I think they will. So they're using tons of caulk and paint, you know, to hide their uh, transgressions. And it's always an interesting thing. I mean, like if you see a bus interior that's all natural wood and stain, that takes a lot more skill to pull off than one that's painted all white. I hate the all white bus conversion. You just throw in a bunch of caulk, sand it, whatever, and you're done, and it hides your lack of skill, but anything that's all white, it's always gonna get dirty, and if you've ever lived in an RV or any type of rig, everything's a high contact surface, it gets dirty, looks like crap. We're doing more of the fake stone thing for the flooring, which I just despise, but hey, he's doing a good job. I w see the gaps there in that last piece he did between the subfloor. That stone, especially these large format tiles like this, they're just gonna crack. I mean, there's no, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it, but we're not going for longevity. We just got to make it look good enough to get that thumbnail shot, right? Oh, I can't tell you how much I hate the faux brick, especially because the giveaway, right, is the, are those huge mortar lines. Like if you're building a real wall, you can't have a freaking three quarter inch mortar line. You're not going to do that. Look at a brick house, maybe at half inch, quarter inch, somewhere in there. But that's a, you know, and like, why are we making it look like a brick house? It's so clearly not a brick house. Okay, back to it. Uh, putting in all this stuff to hide all the screw holes and stuff because we didn't do a proper tape and mud job on the drywall, which probably should have never been in there in the first place. I don't understand why we're painting the roof blue. It should be white if you want to stay cool, you know? <sighs> but let's just paint the whole bus blue. They also got rid of all of the windows on that side. President Che, you do not get my vote for re-election uh, for the bus world. Now this is something I can relate to. No matter what you do, it seems like you always end up painting the outside of your bus in the dark. That's authentic. That's legit. Okay, next day, reveal. Look, they got rid of so many windows in such a dumb way. Oh, and they painted the whole thing blue. 
Oh goodness. Um, but they washed it. Yeah, got to put the bike on there. It's always an e-bike if you're on the YouTube. Um, look at these shots. Uh, Close-ups of the few things he did right, which is nice. Um, is it nice? I don't know. I'm gonna pause it here. Like, just look at the gaps on the wood. It's all been painted, filled with caulk, and there's still gaps there. Out of focus, you can see where they got paint on the brick off on the to the right of that little vent hood thing. Like, look at the paint lines. There's paint all over the bricks. Oh, this would never fly in my life. And uh, let's just pause here and see how things go. It's weird to have those like switch plates like floating over the grout. I think that flooring is just atrocious. And why is everyone so freaking obsessed with painting everything white? The funny thing is, it looks like that's an oven or a fridge, that like white drawer there in the middle. That's a different shade of white than the rest of the white. And if you look on the edge of the countertop that was cut, they just glued or stapled a piece of wood over that and painted it. Like if you were in this bus in person, you would think it looks like shit. But in this little shot that you only have a couple seconds to look at, you think it looks good. This is how the influencer builders do it. If you don't have time to focus on the details, you don't see them, you don't notice the wraparound carpeting trim. Like this bus, if you stand in it, is all walls, poorly done trim, and awfully, like it's ugly as hell. And right now, if that's where the bed goes up there, that is maybe 18 inches tall at most in the ceiling in the center. That's not enough room for a mattress to lay on, let alone if you're the kind of person who likes to have a partner up there and you know have a good time. There's no room for fun up there. I also want to point out these ceiling lines. They reinstalled the ceiling panels, but look at the like gaps and caulk lines where they meet up. That's embarrassing. And why are we doing six inch round freaking dome lights, buddy? Awful. Okay, open the magical door. Oh, here's the master bedroom. Wow. Wow, it's below ground and under here we got lots of carpet. Like the inside of this bathroom, that sink faucet barely fits on there, by the way. It's so trashy, like this fake stone, fake brick. It's all fake. Why not just use things that are the things? Like off the shelf Home Depot faucet valve. So ugly, plastic, ugh, ugh. It's crazy. Let's, yeah, show me how awesome your wooden generator box is. Look at that electrical plug, <laughs> buddy. Ugh. I give that generator a few weeks tops. There's nowhere for the heat to go in there. The dude has no solar. He's got lights out galore. <sighs> that poor bus, it deserved better. Um, but influencers ruin everything, am I right? <laughs> And now we get some shots of him driving around in his bus that looks very overloaded and saggy, like it's got a broken spring. And honestly, it's just embarrassing. The amount of wasted space, the off the shelf look of everything. It's like, you know, when you have you ever lived in like a crappy rental house where everything's like the cheapest it could be done, paints everything white to hide all of your mistakes. And that's what you get. That's what he did. And he's all stoked. He's stoked on it even though it's just an awful, ugly piece of crap. Ugh, breaks my heart, you know? This video got 8 million views. That's more views than my entire channel has put together. And I guarantee you, people will look at this and they will say, oh, that's how you build a bus. What a bummer. Oh. <laughs> but that's what this guy does. And uh, I'm just trying to share with you, you know, I guess the perennial saying of that's not how I'd have done it. Let's go ahead and put this away. I think we are done with that part of today's fun video. But hey, if you like this content, my name's Chuck Cassidy and I've been building buses and converting them professionally for the last nine years. I've been making a living off buses for 16 years and I've got a lot of information to share and that's what we do here on this channel. So if you like this, do all the things. And until I see you next time, make sure you hit the like, the subscribe and all of that stuff. But before we go, I wanna take a moment and we are gonna give a quick shout out to all of the people who support this channel on Patreon because they are of great importance to us. And I really appreciate the fact that they do this and it helps us and we don't have to sell our souls to the evil powers that be to make it happen. So in no particular order, these are the Warland Warriors, which is the name of my first bus, making this channel possible. We got Chance, Shanty Moves, Mitchell, Alliston, Scott Shearer, Kitty and Moxie, hey, I think that's Tim, 
Desrick, Just Schooley, Williard Williams, Marcus Henderson. I recognize a lot of these names, by the way. CDO75, Corey Mullins, Edward Aloko, Tyler Johnson, Kyle, whoever you are, <laughs> Cody Thompson, Patrick Riley, Gian Mario, good to see you again, Swirly01, James Seidel, Steve Drumheller, Dan Burkett, Zachary Taylor, The Happy Fractal, Chad Voss, thank you for buying that bus for me, and Gypsy. If you want to hear me read your name, make sure you subscribe to our Patreon at the highest level. That'll get you in there. And in the meantime, enjoy yourselves, have a great week, and we'll see you here next time on the Chuck Cassidy. Phew!